New Zealand is a country of astonishing beauty. But one of the things I appreciate the most is the way they embrace the indigenous culture of the Maori in their new and still evolving national identity. The situation is far from ideal. There is no economical equality between Maori and white New Zealanders, and Maori had lost so much from their land to their ways of living. But compared to other countries, the acceptance towards the first settlers of the land is one good example. Still, many young Maori struggle with a life in between the modern competitive world and a heritage they could hardly grasp. As an attempt to fill this gap and to preserve the long tribal traditions in some places in New Zealand, groups are still practicing the once feared warrior skills of the Maori. I was fortunate to meet the chief trainer of the Te Araba tribe in Rotorua and experience the art his family is handing down since generations. Yeah, so very rarely do you get a chance to hold the weapon like this to attack the opponent. <coughs> but what's happened is like in your mind you've struck the opponent, he's gone down, and then it's like a, a flash way of finishing the opponent off. But it's also like um, an honorific way as well. Oh yeah. So the thrust goes from here again, it's a thrust, it's a twist trying to get into these these parts of the um, head to open it up. If I can know it's just the beginning position bro, this is the position that everybody starts from. Starts mm. in, so it's, from here is the mental prep, the physical prep. Start your breathing. This position, we're going to some volume. No! So that's our first on guard position. Go on boy! This is our position for prayer. So before we begin everything, we start our, our Taiha Mahi in this position. Before you do a wero, before you do a challenge, before you do anything to do with weaponry, we start from here. Hawaii 2! Hawaii 2 just means Hawaii, where we came from, Hawaii 2 is like, it's a block, but also it talks about all the traditions that have been brought from Hawaii. Practically, you can see it's a block. So in amongst the sparring, amongst the uh, weaponry, this is one of our favourite block positions, but also reminds yeah. us about the ancestors' travels from Hawaii, that's our traditional homeland. Mangapori! <coughs> Mangapori, it's a block. From here, the whip, uh, opponent should be able to block and strike. Also, Mangapori is a, is a form of hammerhead shark. So it's depicting the hammerhead shark. It's also meant to um, remind us of the stealth of the shark, the speed of the shark, the strength. Boys have figured out is that you can move off of your knees as you move forward and then into a strike. Or if you're going down for if you're down that way, you can still change your knees uh, and strike. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that was like um, the strike comes this way, you block it, and you use the inside of the blade to the opponent's throat, and then you thrust that way. So there was a jump. I strike at his legs, he jumps and strikes to my head. Block one, two, over, and then two in the front. The art of the Taiaha, the famous long weapon of the Maori, is still preserved as a very battle-orientated art. Still, the way of educating young warriors resembles the way of traditional Asian martial arts. Forms teach the basic skills of flexibility, strength and technical concepts. Interestingly, the movements and footwork are inspired by the native animals of the world the Maori lived in. Movements imitate the abilities of the hammerhead shark, or the tui bird, the little fan tails, or the owl. So for who is uh, a thrust from here is the thrust, defensive and a thrust. Poyaru means um, where the mopok roosts, where the owl roosts, and it's referring to the top of the Poyaru. Yeah. So it's practical, this position is practical for a strike, for a block. It's like part of, your, part of being a transitory move. You find yourself in this situation as you move through your combat stuff. Well, what they have done is they incorporate these moves in amongst their um, their wheel, which is the other thing you do. You know, when you, you've seen them, they come out and they put the fern out. 
to bring them visitors onto the border. Yeah, yeah. So all this kind of stuff leads to that, and when they get to that, they should be able to do, um, uh, they should be able to battle the uh, Raka as, as well. Because as you go through that process to put the fern out, sometimes you get people challenging you. So that's when you need to have your good men out the front there doing the challenge. They know their taiha, know their history, know about the weapon, as well as knowing how to fight with it. So yeah, all the styles are kept separate, and we're quite a big on that too. So there's another style in Auckland, and there's another one in Wellington. And pretty much everybody else is either an in-house family style, and they you, they protect them jealously. So we don't um, we don't um, well we don't agree with people bringing that style to this style and blending them together and then coming up because the way we were told the story is that this is how it's come from the walker from when we first migrated to New Zealand. So we don't have a right to lose the style by mixing it with others. Mm, yeah. Mm. After I was fortunate to be given this detailed look into the fighting arts of the Maori, I had the honour to show some Asian martial arts and to explain the concepts and similarities between these traditions. What I once more learned from the Maori is that martial arts are an important part of culture. They compress the beliefs, values and histories of the culture they came out of. And they are deeply grounded in the surrounding natural world they evolved in. I am glad to see that some Maori were able to keep this tradition and pass it on to the next generations.